As part of the sustaining ecosystems topic, we've looked at Antarctica as an example of a polar environment. And as part of this topic, we had to look at an example of sustainable tourism. And so we looked at White Desert as, a, as an example of local level sustainable management. We also have to look at a case study of global sustainable management in Antarctica. And so our example that we studied was the case study of the Antarctic Treaty. A treaty is an agreement under international law between different countries or organisations. This treaty was first agreed in 1959 and the UK was one of 12 countries that first signed that treaty. The treaty has now grown to 53 countries and a treaty is really powerful when it's signed by lots of countries because if you break the treaty you're not just breaking your agreement with one country but 52 others. Let's now go through what makes up the Antarctic Treaty. First part of the treaty includes rules about the fact that Antarctica must be devoted to peace and science and that any scientific research carried out should be shared for the benefit of all mankind. And so we've seen that with the use of uh, climate change uh, ice core data carried out at the Russian research base at Vostok being used to help all of mankind get a good understanding of how our climate has changed. It also might involve wildlife uh, science as we try and understand our effect on different ecosystems such as penguins. The treaty includes a rule that we should set aside any territorial claims and so this prevents a potential war as countries claim land for themselves or a potential uh, race to try and claim resources in Antarctica such as oil. Also in the treaty nuclear testing is banned and no one is allowed to dispose radioactive waste there. There's an agreement as well to ban all commercial mining until at least 2048, thus pr pr protecting Antarctica from large machinery digging big holes in the ground. Countries signing up to the treaty are also agreeing to protect all the Antarctic animals and plants. This ranges from the Antarctic hair grass all the way through to some of the largest species of whales. Overall, has the Antarctic Treaty been successful? Well, actually, there been, haven't been any wars and no nuclear testing has taken place. No country has claimed Antarctica as their own. No large-scale mining has taken place. Wildlife is largely undisturbed and most would agree it's one of the last true wilderness locations on Earth. Scientific research has been shared for the benefit of all, for example, the ice core data showing climate changes. On the other hand, although land hasn't been claimed, many countries have built their own bases. For example, the USA bases on the South Pole. There also have been some cases of whaling taking place illegally, for example, from Japanese whaling ships. We've also seen an increase in the number of tourists visiting Antarctica, and that inevitably is going to lead to more instances of wildlife being disturbed. Longer term, there is also the question about what might happen with mining on Antarctica once the current no mining agreement finishes in 2048.